Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Con Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And you can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A M P I R E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And don't forget, you can read my work on ESPN.com. I'm going to have a story up on Friday. It's on Friday. Trust me, it is for sure going to be on Friday about how other coaches and, and executives or people around the league view the situation for Washington at number two, which quarterback do they think Washington will take and why and what, or just kind of analyzing each of these quarterbacks. And when you read the story, you'll see, and I'm going to talk about some of that here. So don't worry. I'm going to get into that in a few minutes. So I'm going to play an interview I had with Dan Quinn from the owners meetings last month, talking about the quarterbacks. Now I did write some of this for ESPN just a, wrote a story on just like, what does Dan Quinn look for in a quarterback? So that ran a week or so ago, but I wanted to play the whole interview and it is just, it's on my, it's, it's just a taped interview. There's no video. So for you video files, there's nothing like that because we're sitting at a table. You'll hear there's people moving around. It's in, it's like in a bar area, not conducive to setting up and doing that. And this was a, this was a one-on-one -on -one interview. So this is the way you do it. And this is the way I did it. So you can listen to it and you can learn, but that's why there's no video. And, and I'm going to save you again. Yes, I agree. It would be fun to have video of that, but listen and learn and see if you can get, see if you can gauge where they might go based off what he how he answers some of the questions. We get into certain things like what he looks for, you know, et cetera. Well, you'll get, you'll hear it. So anyway, stay tuned for that. That'll be in about 10 minutes or so. Uh, and it'll, the, the interview is about 11 minutes long. So if you want to listen to the last 11 minutes of the show, it'll be all Dan Quinn talking, not me. Anyway, but what I wanted to get into is before we get to the Dan Quinn portion, go into in the article I told you about just what kind of went into that. And, you know, I talked to a number of, of people, whether it's coaches, former coaches, um, just, pe you know, people in the game and who know this position, who know this league, obviously very well you know, people who coach the position, people who still coach the position, people who scout that position. And basically, by and large, it was Jaden Daniels. That's the name that kept coming up over and over. Now, I will tell you, I still don't think they have settled on their guy for sure. They may, some of them, I would say probably definitely, I would think some of them have a definite lean. But all three of those quarterbacks are coming in next week. They're bringing a lot of guys in for their top 30 visits next week. Now, is it going to be all decided on by the top 30 visit? No, but I do think it's a crucial part in this process. And I can tell you, like, there are some people over there that, you know, I don't, I just don't think that the minds have been finalized, but I also don't think that even if it was, there may be three people who know, and that would be Dan Quinn, Adam Peters, and Josh Harris. And I don't think those guys will tell anybody. So there may even be people on that staff who are sitting in those rooms who may not have any clue what's going to happen up until like right before the draft, you know? So I think like, that's how tight lipped I think they're going to be with this. And I think that's what happened out in San Francisco. Like they made the Trey Lance deal. And I think there were some people in that front office who probably didn't know what was, what was going to take place because they wanted that, that, the, whatever little whatever you want to describe it the their little group to be very small so that way it, it shores that there are no leaks coming out and i think that's what they're going to do here so even people who are sitting in those meetings i'm going to guess may not fully know what they're going to do um it, maybe up until like around the time of the draft but but certainly not next week i doubt they're going to know <clears throat> um, so anyways let's just keep that in mind when you hear anything coming out of there and again you can, everybody can say like, we think the signs are going to be this. We, you know, the signs point to this. The reality is this is just all it's speculation. And it's, it's trying to be, have educated guesses based on what you hear, based on what you think, based off of what you hear. Right. So, and that's why people, the people I talk to like Jaden Daniels more than Drake may or JJ McCarthy. But there, I would say in each case, there are things that with each of those quarterbacks, that you could say that this would this could entice Washington because of this quality. And I think that's one thing to keep in mind here as well. And it's funny because I was talking to somebody who knows Joe Gibbs very well, played for him. 
And his comment was, I, you know, it's like, which quarterback do you think Gibbs would want? He goes, oh, easy, Drake May, because that's the, that's the prototypical quarterback build that Joe Gibbs always liked. It was, you know, Mark Rippon was that kind of guy. Jason Campbell, that's what it was they liked about him. Doug Williams, you know, Jay Schrader, like those guys were big guys. And those are the guys that he went out and would get because that's what he believed, you know, big guys, big arm. That's probably the guy doesn't mean this guy this team's going to take him at all it's just that my point is there are going to be things in in each of these quarterbacks jj mccarthy if you like that alex smith style then you know if which is you heard jay gruden on this podcast the other day talking about that if that's what you like then that's what that's going to entice you big time and it doesn't mean he can't do things he is athletic he, he has played in huge games and i know that his efficiency in some of those in the national championship game and that playoff run really impressed some people. Now, having said that, I talked to one coach who told me that he felt J.J. McCarthy would be way overdrafted. But this same coach, who is an offensive coach, the same coach would work with him. And he like he felt like he could work with him and get him to develop, but that he would be drafted too high. So in other words, like if you took him at the back end of the first round, that's where he felt like he, a guy like McCarthy would really go, that would be a good draft spot for him. It's not going to, he's not going to fall that far, but this guy, again, this guy, while he's thinking, because he, he, you know, there's the, one of the knocks on him is just, he's got a fastball and that's it. He's got to learn how to layer some throws. He's got to learn how to do some of that. Some of the footwork um, has to improve as well, but there are a lot, they, there is a lot that they like that they can work with, with him with. And then again, with may the big arm, the size, and he, you know, he's he's a good athlete both those guys can move so it's not like they're statues by any means and here's the other part of this too how, what is dan quinn's vision for this how he wants to play and then how does cliff kingsbury's input factor into all that quinn clearly wants to help the the quarterback a young quarterback with the run game and with the defense which quarterback fits into that kind of scenario now for I don't think they're going to, they're certainly not going to want a guy to drop back and throw as much as Sam, they had Sam Howell do last year. That was just the further we get from that, the more ridiculous it has become. But so I don't, you don't see that, but you want a guy who can execute and and in that as they develop as a quarterback. So who can fit that? Well, McCarthy, that's kind of what he did at Michigan, but that's also where Jaden Daniels can help. And this is why people like him. And it's why Jay Gruden said this, but others have said it as well. Like, he can help you early while he's developing as a passer. First of all, he is a good passer. Like let's dismiss that. Any, anybody who thinks he's not is just hasn't watched him. And if you don't think he can go through progressions, you haven't watched him. The kid can, but it, there's an adjustment for any quarterback coming to the NFL when it comes to passing the ball. So while you're learning, can you get out of trouble and how can you help? Well, he can help with his legs more than anybody else. And I think he can help the run game because that you can neutralize that defense or regulate the defense with your legs. So you don't want him running a lot, but the threat is there. So then how does the defense defend you? And how does that help the run game? We saw how Robert helped the run game with Alfred Morris. I mean, I loved watching Alfred Morris as a running back because he broke tackles, because, and he broke a lot of arm tackles. Why? Because that zone read really helped. Now, Alfred also set guys up as well as any running back I've seen here in a, in, in a while. I mean, he was really good at that. And so he would set up and cut back. He was terrific at that. But the threat of that run game with the zone read was always a factor. Again, you do not want Jaden running that much because of the size and the frame, but it's a threat and it's going to happen. Like he, that is something he does well. So that can help the run game as well. And he doesn't turn the ball over. That helps the defense. So when you start to hear that, you think, oh, this sounds like this quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. Then you realize, wait a minute, Jaden can do this really well too. And he's at, he's, he played at a higher level. And it's funny because we had a conference call with Mel Kuyper today. And he even said on there, Washington shouldn't overthink it. It's Jaden Daniels. And so that's a lot. But when I, again, let's go back to what I heard from people. I talked to one prominent coach, um, at the owners meetings and he just kind of rattled off a few superlatives about Jaden and he just said, he's a stud. So that's, that's a kind of reaction I would get from him. More people felt like that Drake may would have to sit for a while. I know you've heard that from other people and it's been discussed, but that is what coaches have thought. And, you know, so, and I think there was just, like I said, there was somewhat of a split 
a mixed opinion on McCarthy. And if you like him, I think you probably really like him. And if you're not, you just think, you know, well, you know, you see this, but I think these guys are better. So, um, but anyway, like I said, so in order, it was Jaden, Drake, and then JJ based on the feedback you would get. But it it doesn't, you know, while that matters around the league, how does it apply to Washington? Because we really don't know how they rank them. And, you know, it's funny because I ran the whole, you know, oh, they, you know, they signed Mariota. It must mean this. And somebody kind of laughed at that. It's like, it's like he needed a quarterback. That's it. It's, you know, the, and I'm telling you, when I'm telling you that I don't think they have, they have fully settled on a guy, I'm telling you, they, I don't think they fully settled on a guy. And, but again, doesn't mean they're not leaning at all, but they are bringing all three quarterbacks in next week. And, and they, you know, I, and actually I think in, in, in Penix and he's, he's coming in as well. So like they're doing their due diligence and Penix to me would be a guy, if you trade back, then, you know, if you really like him that much and you trade it back, that's, you're going to, that's where you get him. I think two is just, it would be really high for a guy like that with, with some of the medical history that he has, but the guy can play too. So, you know, and then it just depends on how, what's the gap you see between the top three and him. And then is it worth is Here's the other thing, like if there's going to be a that big of a run on quarterbacks and a few teams need him, and if you think he's a guy that's worthy of going pretty high, then some other t- chances are another team will as well. So, you know, that's the that's always the risk with trading back, which to me is why in this draft, if you like the guy, take the guy and, and don't don't overthink it and don't roll the dice if you don't feel like, you you know, if you're not sure where this guy might go. I mean, Atlanta has worked out Penix. And I think that'd be a great fit for him just to go there, play behind cousins for a couple of years and then take over. You know, if you're Atlanta, now you can set yourself up for, for the long term with a guy like that. So, and they're picking at eight. So that's why I say like, you need to be careful if you trade back because you're not guaranteed to get anybody. And it's, it's also conceivable that Penix falls a little bit because the medical history, but I don't know. So I think you are going to kind of roll the dice there, which is why if you're, if you like the guy at two, you take the guy too. Anyway, so some of the other stuff like what you would you'd hear with Drake May, for example, is you know just the missed layups. That's a term that you guys we've all heard that a lot of times. And you know there's a ceiling talk, obviously, but the question is, can he get there and when? And I think you know if if you're not sure he can get there, then are you going to take him? That would be that's the one drawback there. But I know that like that arm is big, and he is a and Dan Quinn has said it and he'll say it on this podcast in a few minutes. He's a good athlete. I mean, he, you know, is he the same as Jaden? No, but he can move and he can make some guys miss in the pocket. And that's what the key is at that position. And he can also run. If if you want to run your quarterback on some power counters, he's your dude. So, you know, like, so there is, there's value to that there. But it, again, I go back to with Jaden that the feeling was he can come in right away and help you. And that's why he would, and, and, you know, that floor is higher than with anybody else. And, and it's the other thing is with Jane, like he's not done either. So what is his ceiling? And in, you know, when he gets to his ceiling, what's it look like compared to somebody else? And, you know, I just think you can't assume that that kid is done growing as a quarterback as well, because to me, he took some really big steps when he got to LSU and there was a progression. He was good the first year, got himself into a fourth round discussion, right? And then he had a, then he took off just like Joe Burrow did when he was at LSU. So, you know, is he done growing or is that just like the first sign of it? And the other part of it too, that I'd be careful with as well. Well, he was thrown to Malik neighbors and, and you know, and Hamilton and like, he had some great receivers, right? Okay. Well, I'm an Ohio state guy. I watched Kyle McCord play with great receivers. Kyle McCord was not, not anywhere like this. He didn't even play himself into a draft choice. He played himself out of a job and he had, Marvin Harrison and Amika Ogbuka, who next year will be a first round pick. And he had Kate Stover as a tight end, who is a really good player. I mean, that receiving core is stacked and he did not come out of it looking good. That's why he transferred. So my point is just because you're playing with top talent doesn't mean that's the only reason you did well. It is certainly something you CJ Stroud played with top talent and he, he was fantastic as a rookie in Houston. So, you know, while you can point to it, it's not the, it's, it's not something you can, I don't think you can ding him for it either because he definitely made them better and they, they helped him, but he also made them look good too. So, you know, I think, but I think that's why I say when you add it all up, that's why a lot of people, I think to me are higher on Jaden 
for you know in this draft than than others um but again all it takes is one team and what if it's this team thinks that somebody else is better so anyway lot still two more weeks folks and we're still going to have a lot of a lot more to discuss with this and i'm still hoping to have others on to talk about these other quarterbacks because i do think it's important to hear about whether it's jj mccarthy or drake may we've had i had herm edwards to talk about about Jaden, but I want to have other guys too that are that know these guys a lot better than and in a more personal level than than others do. And so, going to still treat, keep trying to bring those on. And you know, two more weeks, two more weeks. So can't wait till it's over. But and here's the other thing: I know a lot of you, some of you, get tired of hearing about the quarterbacks. All I know is when I when when this podcast is about quarterbacks gets a lot more eyeballs and, and downloads. So, and then, you know, I like talking about other stuff. I had Eric at home on the other day to talk about every other position or every, everything else, but quarterbacks until the end. So, you know, I understand where the interest is and, and why we keep talking about it because that's what that still is what carries the day. And it's so important to this organization, but I do want to, you know, I'm going to have some others on soon and we'll talk about quarterback, but we'll talk about other things too, because this is a key draft for this franchise. Those first six picks can really turn this franchise. I shouldn't say can turn it around because I think they've started to turn around, but I think it can really set themselves up well for the future if they get this draft right. So, but it starts with the quarterback. Anyway, that's it for me. I've babbled long enough. Here's my conversation with Dan Quinn from the owners meetings. Enjoy. Getting talked out yet? All good. Um, Those with the gig, brother. Just like yeah, yours. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I'm curious about, you mean, I brought up in there about the defense and building support for a rookie quarterback. Yeah. How much has that been an approach when, I know you want to build the roster, but in doing that, how much are you looking at like, hey, this will help support a young quarterback? I think whether it's young quarterback, not like, but especially um, a quarterback, like having a run game, you know, that you can lean on for runs and play passes. Um, hopefully having a defense that's, opportunistic to get another series to get him one to go so i think those two things help because what you want from this quarterback spot like the ability to runs play passes rip the ball over somebody you know like as they're stepping up so if you don't have a running game to go like it gets hard fast it does and so do you feel good about i know long way to go but what you've done so far to yes. build that run game yeah and why is that i think um like seeing guys like tyler i know is, you know played in this division and so like, there's some really good D-line in, in this division. So having the ability to go do that was big. And so I saw that with Sam, saw it with Tyler, saw it with Nick. And so knowing the inside pieces of that, you better be able to block some good D tackles in our division. And uh, having an inside presence that is super important. And then with Tyler, the ability to the protection calls. Yes. How good is he there and how much, again. Yeah, he's really strong. And that's one of his areas for like identification in the run game, who's the target, you know, because like he's the one that sets the whole thing in motion, protection wise. Watch the nickel, we're going to change it. So, and he is ready for that type of role for sure. As a defensive coach, you know, it's like when a defensive coach looks for a quarterback, how has that evolved for you over the years? And do you do you think it helps that you look at it a different way? Compared yeah, to I think it definitely has because um, it was like honestly the person like you're trying to get the most, you know. And so, how has it changed? I would say a number of ways. Like, what does it look like if you can? take somebody all the way in disguise, how quickly they can process something like, as a defensive coach, you want to, okay, it's looking like zone, but it's really man-to-man. It's not too high, it's one high. So all the triggers that you want to get to, can you do it after he gets the ball in his hand? Not like, okay, I'm into the cadence, okay, this is man-to-man, I know what it is, they haven't even snapped it yet. So that, to me, was always one of the triggers to say, can we hold a disguise to make them really have to figure it out after the snap? The best of the best, Yes, I can process as I'm taking the ball, as I'm going through the play. And so that's what I look for into these guys. How do they respond when the, you know, an unblocked blitzer comes? And so that throwaway may show up as an incomplete on the stat sheet, but like it got them out of a bad play. Second and 10, that stayed second and 10. They go to third and 18. You know? you, you've obviously met with these guys. Are you able to say like what you saw of Drake or Jaden just in the interviews and what you've seen of them the, so far? The first part, I would say, of any interview, like it's very surface level. Give me a background. So I'm, I'm talking about the combine. Yeah. So that's why going out to visit, not just quarterbacks, but any player, like you get to the man more. Like the ball player, that's everything on tape. And it helps to say, hey, tell me what you think here. What does that look like? One of the questions I ask is, what's a game you hope I watch? 
and why? And what's a game you hope I don't watch? And why? And so it's not like I'm going to go watch the game that they said, hey, I hope you don't watch the game from last season that we played so-and-so. But I, I want to get to, like, what was the lesson? What did you learn? And, like, see it, like, this is what I learned that day. And, like, I had to go through it. I, going into the game, I thought it was going to be X, Y, and Z. And at the game, they played it completely different. And so those are the moments I'm looking for, like, what's the resiliency at that position? And it could be quarterback or defensive line, whatever. I mean, every, not everybody plays great every game. Right. So I wanted to find out, like, when it didn't go right, what happened? What did you learn from it? Can you say, like, how you felt like those guys, or just in terms of leadership, being around them, how was Yeah, you want to see anybody interact with their teammates, too, to say, like, when all their guys were going, were they watching or were they just into their own shit? And so you can generally tell how a team feels about somebody just watching them work out. There's other people there. They're showing enthusiasm for it. And so because the workouts kind of, it's really just secondary. It is because like, all, like, like for quarterback, for instance, like they should be pretty good throwing against air, you know, like, <laughs> like we would hope, right? Right. So it's more the interaction with the guys, or how hard are they competing um, at any drill. So the quarterback throwing is the, accuracy you know one yard in front of the numbers if it's a corner you know are they just nailing every ball drill like there's no drops and so like that's what i'm looking for man like that competing that interaction with their guys because that's all i can really take from that the tape is the stuff to discuss together can you say what you've seen like a drake on film can drake? i say? yeah what have you seen of him like um i think what you see is like ability to create and get outside on the run if the you know, protection breaks down, boom, he can create and go. So I thought that's one of his superpowers for sure. How about Jamie? I think the, uh, like, the difference in it is obviously different, you know, teams they played against. But, man, they have had concepts and looks and different things that, like, Jaden has been able to, like, really process things quickly. And so he may not run as much as Drake does. I don't know what the numbers would suggest. But, like, man, he has real decision-making process, like, fast. And because playing the SEC, that's got to help in an evaluation process. It does. And, like, you know what else helps? Just playing experience. Like, for anybody who's played quarterback, just having snaps, like thousands of snaps, that's a big deal, man, because they've seen the shit, they've made the mistakes. So, like, you don't want to take somebody that doesn't have a lot of snaps. You want to have been in the play, see the game. And so, good news for a lot of these quarterbacks, you're going to see a lot of snaps. And I was going to ask you, because, like, one – Jaden has more than most. Yeah. So compared to, especially, and I keep going to those two, but like the Drake, he doesn't have, but there's the high ceiling. So how do you Yeah, and he has about two and a half, you know, right. of years. But like most things, all right, what went really good, what needs work, and then how would we feature him into our offense, and any, any of the guys. And so that's pretty easy to do. But you take your time, you go through the last couple seasons, like in Adam's instance, like he's been following people through their entire career. So whether it was at ASU and to LSU for him at North Carolina, like, and there's like all sorts of stuff that comes up now. Like, all right, why did these guys stay? Why did somebody else transfer? You know, because like so many of the quarterbacks in the league now and are coming up, like a lot of them transfer. And so a lot, right? And like, you can see why that happens. So I'm like, all right, this guy's going to get the op. I'm going somewhere else. And like, and they flourish somewhere else. Think about like, Hertz or Mayfield or others that had that experience where in this draft, what we're talking about, four guys or five guys, a couple of them went to different schools, right? Talking about SC, uh, LSU, Michigan and UNC didn't, UW did. So, like, you know, like hearing that story of why, that's good. And like, you could make a case to say he's already had to go through a new system and new people and new experiences. Like, does that help him? Um, and so, like, Sometimes a question I'll ask around the people, like, is his leadership an asset or an obstacle? You know, is it somebody that people follow, or is he still figuring it out? You've been around veteran quarterbacks, Matt Ryan, Dak, yeah. also young guy in Russell. Yeah. What lessons did you learn even from that experience to help maybe guide you? Here? Yeah, I think what was great for Russ, like, he's such a good competitor, but also, like, very good run game, a great care of the ball, was aggressive, and we really featured the things that Russ was great at. Like, he could extend plays. He was a great deep ball thrower. So, like, that was a big piece of the run game and a big piece of the offense that he did. So, I think the best of the best will feature what a guy can do and then really accentuate it. Well, you talk about the play action, too, because most of these guys are, like, shotgun. Yeah. So, how do you know? I think if you're a shotgun team, you better have a good shotgun run game. 
go like, here's the play pass that goes with it out of the gun where I can still come back to rip it. And that's honestly where like, we've all heard from like RPOs where like a lot of those come. So like, I'm in the gun and then if you're the running back, you're coming into me, I'm reading, you know, the safety or the backer. If he's going with you, I pull it, you rip the slant behind him. If he's staying back, I just hand it off. And so like, that's an important part of the game to say like, he's really good at that and we need to add that into the offense. If that's not something that they do on a regular, like we're not just going to throw RPOs on because it's cool. Like you have to do the shit that they're really good at. So last thing then, you know, next week, April 2nd, you're back, guys yeah. are back. It's been a few years for you as the guy there. How, how, what kind of feeling is this now compared to even like the first time you had to go through? Is it different now? What's it like? Yeah, it's different because like it's a, a new environment, a new experience, so, like that excitement is there. And so I just want them to know like, man, like we want to make it as a competitive environment together as we possibly can. So like, I want them to know like, man, if you really like competing, like welcome home. I don't want it to be competing, like us going against each other, like that's a good thing. Yeah. And like, how do we have a good day? And like, I beat you in this, you got me in that. Like, but we're just pushing each other hard. Coaches, I want them to do it, players. And so like, I want that to be a, one of the driving forces in the building that like, when you're around, you feel that and people going for it. Not like, I don't talk to him, I'm competing against him, just the opposite. Like, right. and all you think you know, like, right, right, let's right. go. So like, I want that environment to be created and the only way We'll get there is if we talk about it and say this is how we're going to do our stuff. Is it a different feeling for you though this time around? Or yeah. You, okay, yeah. that there, like, uh, is it a different feeling? Yes, it is because um, now that you have a real sense of like, okay, dealing with Sean right now with two minutes, like that's important, but dealing with you, that's really important. So, like, that can wait. This has to be done right now. When you're first new, it's like everything. I'm going this, 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 right. this. So, like, okay, I know what that is. That'll be there in two days. Like, this has to be fucking done right now. And so knowing what's the main thing at the time, like that's really important. So for me, it was super easy to say, evaluate the team. Then I've been on to the free agency. Now I'm on to the draft. So I haven't spent as much time on the scheme, but the coaches are hitting that. I will, but the most important thing I can do right now is help Adam say, this player, this is how we feature him. And so I was gonna make sure like that's my priority and like that's where my focus is. How big for a youth? The use of analytics when we're looking at quarterbacks and all that, is it a big deal to you? Like, people, the analytics people bring up the pressure to sack ratio. Coaches don't, when I talk to them, don't use that. So, like, how big is yeah. that? You know, like, what do you look at in terms of analytics to, with quarterbacks and how do you contextualize it? Yeah, I think there's a couple ones I look at, like, what happens, like, on a deep ball accuracy. Like, when the moment comes for man to man or blitz, like, when you hit that shot, are you able to deliver? Because it doesn't happen all the time where, like, you could hit this game. Um, can you get out of a bad play? That guy was unblitzed. Can I like, a throw away? Is actually like a yes. good play. And so, like as opposed to like trying to play hero ball. Here comes a blitz. I scram. I throw it up anyway. Like, that's a bad play. And so, I wanted to make sure like some of those metrics are just something that I watch to say, okay, I know what that looks like. So, like most things, I would say it's for me analytics. It's on tap, but it's not on top. Okay. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Dan Quinn for joining me. Thank you, as always, for listening. I'll be back with another episode on Monday. I'll talk to you next time.